to Goddess Talk. Peace and blessings on this beautiful Thursday. My name is Balaji, and I have two wonderful guests today. We have Miss Christina Arenas of Blue Sage. Come up to the mic for us, Christina. You two counsel, you're going to have to get up on it. All right, so Miss Christina, you are the owner of Blue Sage Boutique here in Tampa, Florida. Yes. And Mr. Council Rudolph the third. The third. The third. <laughs> you make sure to make sure I had to know that part. Make sure you put that three on there. You are the owner of um, Higher Hustle yes. clothing line here also in Tampa, Florida. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. good. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're talking about a couple different things. We're talking about chakras. We're talking about black love. We're talking about just higher vibrations and your businesses and what they have been doing for the community in Tampa, Florida. So we'll start first with Christina. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and Blue Sage and how you came to be where you are right now. Okay, well, my name is Christina, and I am born and raised in Tampa, Florida. Tampa. Whoop, 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 whoop. (laughs) Are you going to do the Tampa dance? (laughs) Which one? There are so many that I have discovered, and I'm like... This Which one's your lot. favorite? I don't have one. Okay. Like, I'm just still like, Jersey, like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, raised in Tampa, Florida. What's raised up? Raised in Tampa, Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, I have two daughters. Hey. I'm very proud of them. And they're both in school right now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm really proud of them. Well, okay, mom. And, hmm? Mom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my mom, two siblings. I have an older sister, older brother, uh-huh. and cousins that are like siblings okay. as well. So, um, yeah, really blessed in that and family love. Um, and then I'm the founder of Blue Sage Eco Boutique, which okay. I opened back in 2013 while I was in grad school. Six years in, girl. Yeah, six, six years. years. In. Congratulations. Six years. Thank you. Yeah. So how did Blue Sage come about? Well, back in 2001, I actually like wanted to open and have my own boutique mm-hmm. retail space. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't come to fruition until like. To, you know, I start thinking like, what are other ways I can kind of make this dream still work? Okay. And so 2013 is when I decided to um, do a website. Um, the idea of Blue Sage came from, I had a, I worked for a previous cosmetic manufacturer, okay. All Natural. Okay. And I traveled a lot nationally. Mm-hmm. And I realized that there was a huge disconnect between um, wholesome, I say non-toxic products yes. that you don't necessarily have to consume. Mm-hmm. And the idea of that it if if it is all natural, it's expensive. Yeah. Or it's for like tree huggers yes. that like, you know, don't know uh, yeah. quality or whatever else. Yeah. So that's kinda like how the idea of having uh eco friendly business came along. Okay. It's from traveling and then realizing like, okay, some of these things are expensive. Okay. And some of them, you know, if they weren't they just weren't the same type of quality, I guess. That you would like. That I would like. Yes. And so um, that's literally how it began, and it's just developed into what it is now. Okay, so at um, Blue Sage, which I do shop at, I come in and I stack up because I need my chakra candles. She knows exactly where everything (laughs) is. I was like, look, I want this. And I'm only in there for like five minutes. That's it. (laughs) I'm in there for five minutes because I am coming from Riverview now, but it's like I stack up, and I'll be back in a couple months. (laughs) But you have the chakra crystals, uh, which I am just such a firm believer in that system. And so when I saw that and I discovered, I was like so excited. But um, you have other um, scents. So I see one right now you have lit in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, you can lift it up so everybody can see. The camera's right there. Oh. But um, what line are you um, promoting right now so this fall? This is called Enchanted. Mm-hmm. I've had this scent, um, I think, for like a couple of years. Okay. And it's a seasonal scent. Okay. So um, I only made one batch this time. Okay. And that's going to be it for, the, for okay. the season. So that's the last one? No, it's not the last okay. one. I have, you know... I've, I just literally made them this week. Okay. So, so I can stack up you a little stack bit. Up on them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't It'll be everybody all right. come take mine. I got problems. <laughs> all right. So, I'll put one aside for you. <laughs> thank you. Just keep them, keep them. Okay. So <laughs> now, Council, tell us about you, um, Mr. The Third, and uh, how you got to hire Hustle Clothing. Um, born and raised in Tampa as well. Okay. Um, yeah, my, I'm the third. Um, I was thinking about. Over the last few years, people ask me these questions, and it never thought it never occurred to me until I got older. But I always um, liked my father's sense of style; mm-hmm. like it was very simple, but still very classy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always kind of kept that with me. Um, going into high school, there was a group of friends that we had talked about, you know, about having a clothing line and stuff like that. Um, then I went, I went to Fam, and and that kind of um, I met a few people there that were actually doing it. 
and you know living their dreams so i you know kind of they put me under their wing and i learned ab about that and i learned from the business side okay. as well um came back to tampa um still wanted to work on it so i i um would work late night jobs and i would still focus on that um was starting to read a little bit more and you know about higher self and mm -hmm. things like that so um you know after a few ideas and whatnot it it came to me and and um and i tell everybody like if you're looking for a name or just don't rush it it's mm, going to come to you gonna so come right to, yep. um and um yeah so that that happened with the logo and then also with uh higher hustle clothing so um it's been something that has been a good uh expression for me as well and i've met a lot of great people um from the band from the brand and everything as well so okay perfect so the reason I brought up chakras was because of you, and the higher vibrations and everything was because higher hustle. I figured mm -hmm. it was a vibe. It was a whole vibe. I figured yeah. that much. So, um, how did you guys meet? Because another topic that we're going to be discussing this today is black love. So, how did y'all meet? Y'all both born and raised in Tampa. Y'all went to college or high school together? So, we actually went to uh, seventh grade together. <laughs> oh, y'all go way back. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he never would speak to me though. Oh, hey, <laughs> counsel, why you put this? Why you put this? <laughs> Y'all were looking at us like, oh, y'all going I actually going found, there. like, what was that, three years or so ago? I was, like, going through, like, my stuff. I mm -hmm. found a letter that I wrote to my good friend. Back. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, T is so fine. Da, 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 da. I had to take a picture and show it to him. He didn't pay me no mind. Then, then um, back, then, back yeah. then, he didn't pay me any mind. And then we were both, in, uh, when we were in high school, mm -hmm. I went to Gaither, mm -hmm. Big Blue. He went to um, Hillsboro. Hillsborough High School. Why'd you do that? Ooh, I like that shoe because I always do it to people where I'm like, dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. They got school it's, from Hillsborough okay. High to, School. Yeah, they I just guess. feel like... It's a rivalry, I, I guess. It's, it's not, not even a rivalry. rivalry. <laughs> it's not even because not even ours was like another high school. I don't even know what theirs... Oh, who theirs? Shade, but, shade, shade. Okay, continue. But, so, but we were in this program called Granville Academy. Okay. One of our good friends is um, grandfather. He mm -hmm. started this, um, this organization yeah, for... Hmm? John Harrell. John Harrell. Okay. I wasn't going to put his name out there, but okay, Mr. John Harrell. Hey, Mr. John. <laughs> and um, it was called Granville Academy, and mm -hmm. it was for um, black students, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs. Okay. And so literally, like, we, what was it, four years we were in this program? Yeah. About. And we were the first class, and okay. so we were in that together okay. as well. So that's how we saw each other again in high school. But okay. then we didn't bump into each other until, what, five years ago, I was um, vending Blue Sage at a poetry event, okay. and he was there. Um, I don't know why he was there. Why were you there, babe? <laughs> I, a Same thing? Opportunity. Okay. <laughs> it was a business opportunity at the time. Okay. Okay. So um, I walk in, and it's a, and it's a poetry event, right? Okay. So it was Phil's in, poetry I, event, too. Yeah, what's up, Phil? Yeah, what's up, Phil? Uh, Rattling in the house. Okay. Um, so I walk in, and, and you, never, you never know the climate of what you're walking into yeah. especially when it's poetry right it could be a funny it could be sensual it could be anything it could be right very so very deep I walk, this was i walk okay. in and i see her um i'm like oh man like i haven't seen you in like forever yeah. you know and i'm like hey how are you mm -hmm. I'm, I'm i'm coming in strong i'm like hey you remember me i'm counsel and she's just like i'm like okay well maybe i'm Ooh. just gonna go sit down but then later on she was saying that she was still focusing on the, the work part the, yeah. the word part mm -hmm. and i didn't know that so i was just looking at initial like what's going on uh -huh. here you know so that was our reintroduction okay uh there well i had just finished crying oh because okay. the person that was the, the poet uh -huh. what some, she was she very deep in. yeah and so he comes up to me and i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was the face that yeah. I remember, yeah. But I will say, uh -huh. once I like saw his eyes, because mind you, last time I saw him, he had hair on his head, no hair on his face. Mm -hmm. And you know what it's I mean? It's a shock. It's a it's shock. It's a complete factor. opposite. He had it no is flipped because you had no hair. And I got this <laughs> Okay, Kelsey, you switched it up real big on her. Come exactly. on. You did. You Thank did. You did. You Thank you. Did. So, <laughs> but... Even then, it was like a few months. It, actually, when I got back from Ethiopia, uh -huh. which we can talk about that okay. when we talk about manifestations okay. and things like All right, that. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. So but, that's how y'all met. Yeah. So I want to actually go back to the program that you guys met in mm -hmm. because I'm always all about entrepreneurship and especially when we have great programs in our communities. And do you feel like those programs still even exist now in Tampa, Florida or in the Hillsborough County schooling, St. P, any of that stuff? I would say that they probably exist in, in other forms. I'm not going to take um, or 
not give anyone credit for mm-hmm. actually is mm-hmm. doing the work that I may not know about, mm-hmm. which I'm sure that there are a lot of people out, out there, there that yeah. are planting the, the seed of mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. But um, I think for us, it was very important that uh, that seed was planted, that we saw other yeah. entrepreneurs at a young age and they would buy us um, Monopoly games. They would okay. buy us um, briefcase and stuff like that. So, and they would have entrepreneurs that so would they really come in downloaded every week. a lot of good information mm-hmm. and great. Yeah, we even had like competitions of like mm-hmm. stock. Mm-hmm. So, like they taught us how to like read the stock. It was a newspaper back then. Yeah, but like how to read like the stock market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like we can invest. What was it like five dollars or something like that? It was very yeah. Uh, yeah. minimal. Um, but also, too, uh, Miss Tawanda Bradley, mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all are familiar with her. She was part of Granville Academy as well. And mm-hmm. she was really um, pivotal for uh, the young black women okay. in this academy. Okay. Yeah, so. So that's really great because I want everybody to understand that for Goddess Talk especially, we're talking about not just loving each other, but how can we educate each other and where we can really pull our younger generation still forward because we're kind of losing the game right now. So that's great. So shout out that program again. What's the name of the program? It was. It, it was, was Grand Bell Academy. Yeah. Oh, so I we, mean, you okay. got to think, this is like 20 plus years so, ago. <laughs> so, so they're still trying to use their in the school system, so I'm going to let them. <laughs> yeah. So Grand Bell Academy, yeah, but it was Academy. more of an entrepreneurship program for mm-hmm. students, and it wasn't just for one school. It was encompassing the yep. whole Tampa area, probably. Yeah, yeah, we invited other people. It just wasn't for Hillsborough. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so now, um, what time is it? Okay, we're going to be taking a break in a little bit. But uh, what I want to focus on now is the different events that you've been going to. Um, because, honestly, the only reason I even heard about you was because I saw you at Morris, um, Morris Martin's uh, first black mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah. entrepreneurship program. It mm-hmm. was the Black Expo right and you were there and you had your clothing and then i saw the candles and i'm like obsessed with candles and i was like oh who's selling this and he was like yeah my girlfriend i was like where is she (laughs) because he was selling it but it was like you could tell he was really focused on his stuff Mm -hmm. and then i was like i fell in love with the candles and then i just like had to show up and i met your daughter that day because remember we talked about how i just popped up on a sunday yes and it was just like I was like, yeah, are you guys open? And she was like, yeah, we're up here for like another half hour. I was like, all right, I'll be there in 10. And I just popped up. And you were her first lesson in visualizing and manifesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was so weird. You told me the story afterwards. I was like, oh, that day I just woke up. I want my candles. And that was just it. I was going to get my candles. And when I looked up the time, I was just making sure somebody was going to be there. I was like, look, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. And I came in and I just bought a whole bunch of stuff and left but then we spoke later and you told me that was her lesson i was like oh that's great so what we're gonna do we're gonna take a break but in the meantime if you guys have any questions call us at 813-444-9588 um this is in touch news goddess talk we'll be right back you're not ready for me but it's okay You got it. All right. Well, it is Black uh, Business Month at the same time. So we have been shouting out a lot of black businesses. So when we come back, we'll shout yours out some more. But if you have any other ones you want to shout out, please feel free. Okay. All right. All right. We'll be back. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. You got up this morning. You got up this morning. Eyes sneaking open as the feet hit the floor. Got to thank God for the rise this day. The stove perking the smell of nutrition. Get to your destination with planned unselfish acts. Bulletin board read, do you have any to spare? Happiness and understanding. We all have experienced that one phone call. Family member, co-worker, friend has passed on. We don't know our last evening or morning. Get up. Help someone out. Now walk it out. You got up this morning. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. You can reach out to DLD at DLD28002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. When it comes to reality radio, everyone is a star. I know that's right. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. Access Access granted. In Touch Radio. Welcome back to Goddess Talk. This is Balaji. Uh, we are here with Miss Christina Arenas of Blue Sage Boutique and Mr. Council of Higher Hustle. Higher Hustle Clothing, correct? Perfect. All right. So before the break, we we're talking about a couple things. Um, Christina and Council introduced themselves, talk about their upbringing in Tampa. How is it being from Tampa? Because a lot of people, you know, you guys grew up here, born and raised, and went to college here. You did. I went to college here. Oh. He went to town. <laughs> like, he's making that very. He was like, no, no, no. I didn't. I stepped out. <laughs> <laughs> so what school did you go to? Uh, Florida a m University. I'm a proud Rattler. So Tallahassee. It's still in Florida, though. Yeah, but it's not Tampa. Oh, okay. Sorry. That was my up north person not realizing the different areas. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. But you went to school in Florida, so you yes. stayed local did, enough yeah. for the state, even yeah. though it's like three hours drive. Four, four hours, yeah. Dang, Florida is big, first it of is. all. I want to say that. It may take me two and a half hours to really get from the bottom of Jersey to the top, but I'm not doing that four-hour drive. Like, I can't. But how was it growing up in Tampa? Do you feel like it's still the same Tampa or has it changed for you guys, you know, as you guys have grown and started businesses? Do you still see the same faces? What is the entrepreneurship um, life like in Tampa? Those are two questions. Okay. Break it down. So I'll say being from, I was born and raised in Odessa. So I was born like in the rural part of Tampa, um, which that, swiftly changed by the time I got to high school. Okay. Like we didn't even have a grocery store next okay. to us like, okay. at first. Um, and how it is now is definitely developed, um, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. It is that it's a po- pretty cool thing that mm-hmm. Tampa is now becoming the metropolitan city that I know many of uh, the mayors previously and many entrepreneurs and business owners wanted, dream, wanted yeah. to be. Mm-hmm. Um, like what we get the third Super Bowl coming in the, in the next year or mm-hmm. whenever and like the last 20 years yeah. that's awesome so um i will say like that's pretty that's awesome i will say that um i do believe that it might be a little oversaturated with okay. some things okay. and that can cause some difficulties yeah because i'll say the word gentrification is very real right now it is. in the tampa bay area that i've seen because even where you're located mm-hmm. um what shout out your street address for your location please 6202 north central avenue that's tampa 33604 in the heart of seminole heights all right so that's seminole heights and again being from outside looking in i thought it was cute area i was like okay seminole heights but then i was just told it was just not us over there for the most part it's become very developed and gentrified to the point now they're they're kind of pushing businesses, even like yours, out mm-hmm. of the way. Yes. Okay. So you've been there now how many years? Almost six years? Oh, no. We've okay. only been the brick and mortar for two. Okay. Um, but I've been in business six years. He's been in business for, what? Over 10 years. Um, over 10 years. So. And how? And you guys work together in the same location, correct? Yes. Because I come in there and I see your stuff and I buy your stuff. I'll buy a couple, you know, the long... It's the dress. The dresses. I had a couple of those ones. I had those ones. I had the big Africa on there. You know, I'm, I'm repping till the day I die. So I saw oh, sure it. I. And you had the RBG. You know, I was like, okay, look at that. Go ahead, counsel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, what about you with Tampa? How does it feel to you from where you grew up to now? Well, my experience is kind of bittersweet. Mm. Um, my father, first of all, one of my 
chief uh, inspirations was my father mm -hmm. uh, being an entrepreneur. Uh, he, uh, a professional athlete, then he transitioned over. So um, I knew him more as being um, an entrepreneur than mm -hmm. I did him being athlete. knowing as an athlete, mm -hmm. which was weird in a way because then other people that were alive when when he was playing, you know, they were like, oh, he's a, he was a great, yeah. he was a great, and I was like, okay, because he stopped <laughs> playing when I, I was born. Yeah. I mean, injuries and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but he had a, uh, he had a check cashing business. Okay. He had uh, one out there on Causeway and 78th Street, and another one on uh, Nebraska, um, between Nebraska and, Sal uh, Nebraska and Cass Street. Um, and I would work there in the summertime, and when I was uh, in between working uh, or going to going to school, um, we would uh, all, all work in the the business. Okay. So my sister would work in the business; I would work there, you know. Um, but some of the changes that occurred down in Central Park area, um, it it definitely impacted my father's business mm. uh, because. Um, as the regentrification was going on, a lot of his customers who would come in and cash checks and things like that, um, they slowly started to dwindle down mm -hmm. further and further away. Um, even at some point, he would uh, just, he said, I'm just leaving the business open. I'm not even making any money right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just leaving the business open so people can come in and um, and pay their bills mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. And still see you and still have that part. Because we had Amscott community. coming yeah. in. So we had a lot of different things. So it was a blessing that he eventually retired. But um, that was one of the first things that I saw. because. Mm. For years, you know, I would see the activity that was outside and everything like that. So I started, I saw it to dwindle. So it was bittersweet in a way. But um, I think now there's a, a lot more opportunities. But at the same time, sometimes it is saturated okay. where, um, I mean, because of the opportunities, you have a lot of people that are playing Chiefs mm. and not enough Indians in a way. Um, it's good and bad. Yeah. You know, I guess you have to try it and then kind of, you know, fill your position there. But um, just seeing how the city is expanding um, and, and kind of coming together, um, I, I like the vision. Mm -hmm. The opportunities are there, you know, if, you know, if we, we align together. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we still have this nostalgia for yeah. driving down different parts of Tampa. It was like, that wasn't there when yeah. we were here. And that wasn't here. And, oh, those people are rollerblading now. Like, this you was a dangerous. Gone. This was a dangerous part of town where we were growing up, and now Brooklyn. they're, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, now they're, uh, you know, walking their dogs and jogging, Harlem, like, all yeah. that. I was yeah. like, what up? you couldn't walk down this. What you, what you mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, and I was in Harlem early this year, so I saw yeah. some of the the dip, the, the uh, similarities there. So you know, it is it's bittersweet. Yeah, you know. Okay. So now, um, I want to talk about just vibrations because. For your particular clothing line, you were talking about, you know, higher self, higher mm -hmm. knowledge, all those things. So explain that to us, um, the viewers especially. What, how do you get into that? You know, because you had to have had some kind of awakening for you that is like you want to kind of infuse that into the community. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. Um, I, I think when I went to, to FAM, mm -hmm. it, it kind of um, expanded me to a lot of different people okay. uh, from a lot of different places. It was almost like I was able to travel but st still stay in the same mm -hmm. spot because I would uh, talk with people from D.C. and Cali and everywhere else and, and kind of just go there. Um, there was a few teachers there with, with me going to a HBCU. Uh, it was really beneficial for me because it was kind of an extension of Hillsborough where it was a tight-knit mm. uh, group of people that really cared about you. Yeah. Um, and so I went to FAM and, and uh, met um, uh, a few people up there uh, and friends. Uh, Dr. Denard, uh, one of them, he had an African-based uh, center school, him and his, his wife. And he's actually from St. Pete, so okay. that made a connection even okay. more uh, grounded there. But um, just just finding out more about myself, you know, they say seek seeking you shall find. Mm -hmm. um, so with with that me being uh, seeking, you know, I I met people and and read books and stuff like that. So um, it was really just like an expression of my progression in a way. Um, you just being your best self, and even if it's something just day by day, you know, just being your best self. Okay. Um, before Lil Duval came out with his song. Yeah. But, um, you, <laughs> you know, had to so, throw that yeah, in yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. He, he's from Florida too, so yeah. you know, yeah. So um, for us especially, we always want to definitely just, you know, always empower the black man. So for you, um, could you talk about what that knowledge of self really looked like? Because a lot of our men struggle to even come to that, even wanting to even get to that part. So were there any particular books that you would like to drop and recommend to anybody? Um, one of them was uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X was mm. was one of the first ones. Okay. Um, 
not a black author per se, but uh, Dale Carnegie, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I, one of the first books that I um, got off my father's bookshelf mm-hmm. um, that he probably read a long time ago yeah. and not knowing that I would pick it up. Um, um, of Water and Spirit by um, um, Dr. Somay. He's okay. in Orlando. Okay. Um, Local person. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, just just a few books there. Okay. Um, kind of open open my mind up and and uh answers a lot of questions that i was i was uh Seeking. asking myself okay yeah. cool so now christina mm-hmm. all right we're gonna talk about the chakras okay so just give us a basic um just knowledge of it um and then explain how you have used that with your candles we're probably going to go to the break while you're talking about that but just let's start with that part so what's the chakras what are they because most people are like oh we hear it but we don't know So basically what chakras are, are energy wells Mm -hmm. in our body, Mm -hmm. right? Aligning, right? And so um, we have seven main ones that Mm -hmm. go from our root, our base of our Mm -hmm. spine to the crown of our head. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea, of course, is for them to be spinning and uh, balanced, Mm -hmm. I guess it's lack of a better word, vibration. Mm -hmm. If it's spinning too fast or too slow, sluggish or... Overactive. Hyper, overactive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We exhibit different type of, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, even spiritual. Yes. Um, reactions. Reactions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So the idea is to have them balanced. Mm-hmm. Each one, of course, has its own um, property, right? Mm-hmm. So our root, which is at the base of our spine, mm-hmm. of course, is like security, protection, stability. It's almost kind of, is it called Haslow's? Or Maslow's I, Maslow. Maslow yeah. hierarchy of needs. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of if you think about it in that sense, yeah. like if you feel secure and protected, mm-hmm. right, then you have you have met that yeah, right, met that part. and then it goes all the way up. With okay, your sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, brow, crown, all that, all and that of course, good stuff. So I want also, especially because a lot of people uh, they see the gay pride rainbow mm-hmm. and think that's no the chakras were the original um just the color system if you want to right. use that but um those colors really are what we are the root is red the um sacral is orange then you have the solar which is solar plexus which is yellow green for the heart um the blue is the throat then we have uh, indi- indigo mm-hmm. for the brow and then the crown is our purple or right. violet so um a lot of people have mis you know just misrepresented that i feel right so now with um blue sage you have a set of chakra candles and i'm just so in love with it because you actually put stones in them too i do and i love the pocket stones. full of stones yes <laughs> yeah so that line that mm-hmm. collection actually took me a year mm. to come up to with come, or, okay. to to get the the sense correct mm-hmm. To get the crystals, the right ones for that. Because also, to um, let's say, for instance, you're working on your root chakra, right? Ooh, yes. But yet, you're not necessarily. I'm in my solar um, plexus right now, actually. <laughs> I just want to let you know. That. Okay, well, we use solar plexus. <laughs> let's say you're working on your solar plexus, yeah. but when you get to the shop or when mm-hmm. you smell it, it's not a scent that you're drawn to. Yeah. But you might be drawn to the sacral one. Mm-hmm. So, what I, what I did was I used crystals and scents that could kind of mm-hmm. interchange between. A few of them. Yes. So that way, even if you're working on another one, another one you, can still, you can still get the same properties by using a different candle. Okay. So. so we're going to take our next break. Um, if you want to call in, 813-444-9588. This is Goddess Talk on In Touch News. All right. Perfect. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. 
My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I uh, got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years. And a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. When it comes to reality radio, everyone is a star. Shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. In Touch Radio. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Goddess Talk with Balaji. And our special guests today are Miss Christina Arenas of Blue Sage Echo Boutique. And Council Rudolph the Third of Higher Hustle Clothing. Hi guys. Hey. Hello. What's up? What's up? So before we left on the break, we're talking about the chakras. So we went through the base of the spine to our crown. Um, but let's talk about how we. This is our original system as an original people. Um, it's not witchcraft. Is any? Is none of that? This is facts that we can track back through history. So talk a little bit about just the chakras. You said you wanted to talk about your mom. So, <clears throat> which is. I'm glad he mentioned this. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that a lot of people who aren't familiar with just spirituality, yeah. I'll say that too, and just being in touch with the earth mm. and intuition and meanings of yeah. things, right? Yeah. Just kind of dismiss it. Yeah. Um, they think it's associated with something negative, mm. right? So a lot of people will come into the shop and they'll say, well, what is this? You know, this is voodoo or this yeah. is this. Well, you know, what would Jesus think about that or something like that? Yep. You know, and I realized, like, we're all in different growths, different journeys mm. at different times, mm -hmm. right? So something that sparked me to kind of dig, dig in deeper might have happened a lot sooner than it did for somebody else, yes, right? absolutely. So um, I explained to them, listen, it's all created from the earth. Everything has its purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything has energy, right? That's made. Yeah. We yeah. are just walking right. energy. That's all we yes. are, right? And that we're made by the creator. Mm -hmm. So it has a purpose for not only us, but other living things that yes. that Uses. belong yeah, right. Yeah. Use these things. Mm -hmm. So, um, my mother is a devout Pentecostal woman, and um, it has been amazing mm -hmm. to to have her not only embrace what we do at the shop, but that she works there as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest things happened maybe about after we had been open at the brick and mortar for six months. Mm -hmm. Um, she was talking to a customer that came in and I heard her explaining crystals oh. <laughs> and explaining sage yes. and the benefits of it. So like that to me, I'm like, if my mom can get it anybody and she benefits can. from it, yeah. anybody can. Okay. So talk about the kind of crystals you're using. Cause I know a couple of them Yeah, cause I'm just so obsessed with them. <laughs> but I know within your root chakra, I believe you have garnet. I have garnet. Yes. And the sacral acetrine. Okay. Solar plexus sunstone. Mm -hmm. Heart, rose quartz, mm -hmm. um, throat, which is, I named it Ohm. Mm -hmm. I have aquamarine. Okay. Um, the brow, third eye, I have sodalite. And then the crown chakra, crowned, I have amethyst. Okay. So which stone um, for a basic person who doesn't know what they want because a lot of people want to get into it but they don't know because mm -hmm. um, I remember you were probably my introduction to stones and I was like I want to find a location where I could go buy it and you sent me to a couple different places but then I know there is a local person black yes. owned yes. Um, that you've been promoting recently and a couple of my friends like yo B have you heard about this place so tell us about our local crystal shop so in Tampa her name is Paula mm -hmm. she is the owner and founder of Chakra Zulu Crystals okay. which she is located off of North Florida Avenue. Okay. Um, a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. um, definitely go out there and check it out. She is open from Tuesday to Saturday. Okay. It's from right 11 by to Hillsborough 6. High School, too. It's, it's right by Hillsborough High School. Okay. It is. Okay. All right. So now, 
What? <laughs> I mean, for people that don't know, I mean, it's right behind the baseball field. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I would have Googled it, and if it came up on maps, I would have found it. That's how I would have found it. But talk about your crystals, because, again, um, from your bio that you showed me, is like you also infuse it with not just love, but also magic. So what yeah. kind of good energy are you putting into these um, your products, but just into your space, your life, and all those? So talk about that. So one of the things when I first started making candles and I found out the hard way, if my energy's not right, if I'm not feeling good, mm -hmm. just stop. Yeah. Even if it takes a couple of days and I'm behind mm -hmm. because I will end up messing up. Mm. Meaning like the candle won't pour right. I'll spill stuff everywhere. Like, and I have spilt three pounds of wax everywhere. Mm. So, you know, um, making sure that you're in a good space, yeah. of course, is very important. Um, one of the crystals that I, it's like my go-to crystal because it's so easy yeah. and it does so much is selenite. Okay. S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E -E yes. for anyone that wants to Google that. That's one of my favorite ones. Yeah. That was the first one yeah. that I got from yeah. you. Yeah. And that's how everybody, one. like if you're new to the crystal yeah. game, like start out there. Yeah. Like don't start picking out all these things yeah. because if you don't know their benefits and their power, mm -hmm. like. You're just messing yourself you up. You might mess up. Yeah. You know, mess up. Mm, you know, that can be, that can, it's all relative. But yeah, start out with selenite. Selenite, and then work your way up as you start growing. And what are the benefits of selenite? If you can tell people. So I like that it cleanses your aura. Mm -hmm. It also has the ability to remove stagnant energy. Yes. Um, it also, like for me, how I get introduced to it. I used to have trouble sleeping. So <laughs> <laughs> I still do, even though I have the selenite. I still. It's do, on your nightstand. It is right next to me. Huh. right next to me but i'm literally like the moon child like i literally i'm up the whole time wide awake doing work me and the moon we just be winking at each other do, but up? do you sleep during the day um i do okay but then um <laughs> but me and the sun like i can be outside all day just literally just taking all that energy in so i'm a my, i'm a cuss baby so literally i i literally work with both energies the cusp of april um aries into taurus oh, okay yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> Council. <laughs> Council was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of energy over here. And just my, my birth story is just literally my mom said it that I was born during um, a crazy storm in Nigeria, but born into the peace of the day. So I literally know the evening wow. and the daytime at the same moment. It's so it's so crazy. So my energy is all that. It's I'm, so I'm a cusper of yeah. Aquarius and Pisces. Okay. So I'm like 95% Pisces. Yeah, I have my Aries days. Yeah, I have a lot of Aries days. <laughs> um, but so selenite is right. I have like two of them. Um, big ones now probably. You have the huge one. Yeah, the, the shop. Block. Which yeah. you notice is getting smaller and yeah. smaller each time. Yeah. But we have selenite at all of our points of entry. Yeah. At the shopping at the house. Mm -hmm. Also on our windows. Yeah. Like all of that. I have crystals like all four corners of each room almost yeah. uh, just to kind of pull that energy in. All right. So that's what you've done. So now let's switch also to another reason we brought you guys here, which is about black love. What does that mean to you personally? And what do you feel that means to you as a unit? Oh, me first. Um, yeah. I think black love is just um, first loving yourself, mm. um, loving yourself from the inside out, just being proud of, of everything that you know makes who you are yeah you know um i think black love is uh, just an extension of that you know because if you uh as corny as it sounds if you can't love yourself you really you can't, can't love fully else. love yeah. somebody else because even if you love somebody else and you're pouring all them into you then you're wondering like where's my mm -hmm. piece of the pie i want the same thing and i didn't ask you to do this you know so a lot of times people do that mm -hmm. looking for uh, reciprocation yeah. where it starts with yourself so you know that that's where it all uh, starts from there and even in just tying in like with the chakras I think one of the major excuse me chakras that people look over is the heart chakra mm -hmm. people leap to the third third eye because mm -hmm. they're like oh I want to find out all this stuff and whatnot mm -hmm. it's almost like you're driving like, in like a Bugatti but yeah. you don't know how to drive stick shift or you don't yes. know how to control the car yeah. right so it can crash but if you have a heart chakra, it's like you're still being guided by your heart. Yeah. You know, so going back to black love, you know, you want to be guided by your heart and, and just kind of um, be easy with yourself mm -hmm. and your partner and everything else, because we're all growing together. Yeah. You know, nobody has it figured out. You know, um, if we were all perfect, then life wouldn't be fun. Mm. You know, it'd be just like it'd be dull. Yeah, it'd be dull. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, 
that's a little bit um, of my one story that I would like to um, share with you all is like, um, not, I don't want to get the number wrong, mm-hmm. but uh, it was at a uh, celebration of my parents' anniversary. I believe it was 30 years, I believe 25, something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, my father's well known in the community. Uh, either be from football, from business, or whatnot. Um, and one thing I didn't notice until that dinner was my mom was, she would be taking us to my sister to ballet practice and me to f- baseball practice and, you know, everything else. And he was still an uh, entrepreneur and he was still doing his thing. Mm-hmm. So we would hear hear him when the garage opens in the morning and he leaves. Mm-hmm. And then we would see him later that night when, you know, we're about to finish eating dinner. Um, not that he wasn't there. He was very much there. Mm-hmm. But uh, one of the, the uh, people that were there thanked my mom, said, I want to thank you for allowing him to be who he is. Mm. And I thought that was so impactful because a lot of times our partners don't allow us to be who who we are. Mm. You know, and sometimes we have that resentment like, oh, I wish I could have done this. Yeah. I felt like this person was holding me back. But, you know, when you have a partner that allows you to be who you are, you know, then you can fully bloom and you're happy within yourself and then you're happy within the relationship as well. Not that it's perfect, but... You know, you're you're feeling better because you're, you know what I'm saying, walking your path and everything. So that's kind of, I see my parents as uh, an example of black love, you know, and, and business, family, and everything else involved as well. So Okay. You mentioned something. I'm glad you brought that story because I literally pre-wrote this in the car. And for black love, I put in acceptance there mm-hmm. because accepting your partner and accepting yourself. A lot of people can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you want to kind of tell the person what you want them to do, but you haven't even accepted yourself to even accept them. So thank you for that story. But now, Christina, what's black love to you? And what do you feel like it is for you as a unit? So um, I'm going to quote Nipsey Hussle, which is, you know, you can't possess people. Mm. You experience them. Right. And um, prior to us dating, I went on like a strict, like, I'm not dating anybody. Mm-hmm. I was in grad school. I said, you know what? I'll start dating when I get back from Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. And um, that was what you were trying to talk about. Oh, Ethiopia. Boom, okay, Ethiopia. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that. <laughs> I'll write it down. Write that. Ethiopia. But, um, you know, and then literally the week I came back from Ethiopia mm-hmm. is when we started dating. Okay. But um, we experienced each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely have my flaws. And I know he knows he has his as well. Yeah. Um, but we have a very, I would have to say, I'll speak for myself. I feel like we have a very healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the first relationship in my adult life to where, like, we we all have disagreements. We don't have arguments. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't put each other down. Mm-hmm. We talk about it. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a pleasant experience. You know, it's very mature. And uh, I appreciate him as as the man that he is or oh, he was yeah. four years ago mm-hmm. that he is today and that he will be yeah. in the future okay. you know um and so, just to kind of piggyback sorry, what are you about to say? no come um, on um so my parents got a divorce when i was 13 i'm the youngest of three mm. and um i remember that time I, I felt like both of my parents just felt like they were just like doing the worst thing ever is divorcing mm-hmm. um for whatever reason i think i took their divorce very well um, and I think I took their divorce very well because they were very mature in their Not separation. I never to this date um, have ever heard either one of my parents say anything extremely negative about each other. Mm-hmm. Um, they always, you know, they still get along. We were having vacations with each other up until maybe like 10, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. you know. So um, that's that to me is also black love. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, we were together when we were in high school. We were married for 20-some years, but it's not working out. But we can still love each other. Yeah. Separated. Right, through our differences and through our separation. Let's talk about all the little things I wrote in the car. (laughs) Because uh, a big thing I feel like a lot of people miss, you talked about the heart chakra being the most important, or one of the um, most important. I feel like the throat is so important. Communication. Communication, because that is a big blockage for a lot of us. Because we can't... um, we can't apologize sometimes or we don't even know how to even talk about what we're dealing with sometimes. It's not even just communication. It is comprehension. Mm-hmm. Listen. Yeah. But listen and understand yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yes. So earlier 
early in our relationship we did do the love language quiz and my just, like, yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those girls I am one of those like, girls here you go yeah, let's take, do take, this take, take this I had my daughters do it too like yeah. the four of us did like it she together gave me a homework assignment like here take this quiz have <laughs> you had a natal chart um, exam have you had a natal chart reading uh, it oh okay, yeah perfect yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what date time <laughs> what location were you I'm born I'm asking my mom mom I, what time was I born again she's like what Okay, so we're going to take a break. Oh, we're going to talk the, through the break. So we'll be right back, all okay. right? Hi, this is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorms, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. In Touch Radio, where you can listen to a cruising flow of smooth soul and jazz. Today's R&B, a fun touch of hip-hop and gospel. All my music on one station. Giving you a buffet of music, news, and entertainment. We're In Touch Radio. Hey, 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 this is Goddess Talk with Balaji. How are y'all doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have our great guest today. We have Christina from Blue Sage Echo. Echo. See, I have the uh, Echo is my other way. So Eco Boutique. And we have counsel for our uh, Higher Hustle Clothing. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so before the break, we were talking about just a couple different things when it comes to black love. But you were talking about your parents divorcing and understanding that communication. I feel I mentioned that communication, I feel, is a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned comprehension because some people just listen just to react to and respond, to yeah. respond mm -hmm. versus let me take this in. Let me reflect on this. Let me really marinate this whatever you just said and not be offended by it you right. know what i'm saying because a lot of people get offended because you sometimes will put a mirror to there mm -hmm. to them and i had a great conversation with a friend recently and it was just like the mirror and i was like it's so funny you keep talking about that mirror i actually appreciate the mirror mm -hmm. a lot of people can't look at the ugliest side of yeah. them so um within your relationship you had to do the work personally to be able to come together to do the work together. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. we're still doing the work yeah. personally and together. Like yeah. it's, it's to me, it's, it's daily growth. Yeah, you know. And you mentioned something especially, and I think a lot of people have this misconception. They think that love can and always will be forever, but sometimes things happen. Yeah. And having that growth within yourself to be like, you know what? We had this incredible space together. We we loved, we cared, we grew, and then guess what? I still truly love you, but I don't feel like we need to go on this journey together still. Right. And a lot of people don't know how to let go. Mm -hmm. So um, talk about that because you guys, of course, you're in the now. You're blissfully happy, which I love. You know, you guys are good right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're happy, right? <laughs> Look at this. happy, right? <laughs> Ouch, you can't, oh, yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Yes. No, I am. I am. Okay. I, I, I joke. I joke. I joke. I'm happy. I, joke, yeah. I, I kid. I kid. I kid. Yeah. Producers over here like bite his nails. Like mm, I'm gonna get you later. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you guys also run business together. Has that um, increased? You know, your relationship. Um, you talked about friendship. Like, talk about those things and how that works with you. Um, it, it's. I, I don't have any kids. I don't have any mm -hmm. children. So, with us opening the business, like we were. How long were we together before? we Two years. Like two years, two years, right? So a little over two we, years. <laughs> we were we were together for two years. Um, at, we did this thing called 
the weekends, mm-hmm. right? So this thing called Saturday and Sunday mm-hmm. where people are off and you go Enjoy out and do each things, other. right? Yeah. yeah, and you we did we did stuff like that. Um when the, and the shop came. Mm. So I kind of liken the shop as a a baby. Mm. Um so we were our first year, you know, we were there every day. Hold on, like, a baby that no one else wants to babysit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Nobody wanted to babysit it. Like, Nobody oh yeah, wants to babysit. We'll, we'll come visit. You know, <laughs> yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> but it was almost, and, and it it doesn't happen as much now because mm-hmm. we are able to take some weekends off. Mm-hmm. But um, thanks to Francisco, I would Thank liter- you. yeah, I would literally wake up, and I would I, truthfully I would ask, what's what is today? What's today? What's today? Mm-hmm. Like, because you know, people that work, you know, nine to five. Mm-hmm. You definitely know the Friday. Yeah. You definitely know Saturday. You you're know going. you're getting sad on Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know because uh, Monday's wrapping back, back back around. But um, I think it was just another um, challenge for our relationship mm-hmm. uh, to grow mm-hmm. um, and to understand how two creative people create in their own space. Mm-hmm. Because I create different than, than she creates. I, and you I need, execute differently I, than yeah. she does. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Yes. And, I, yes. and, and I think we we uh, we learn from each other mm-hmm. as well. And we're continuing to learn from each other. Um, but I think that was one of the things as far as us adding that business component there. It was, um, you know, we, we share a lot of ups and downs together, mm-hmm. you know. So I think tying that in as well, you know, and I think all of that is underlined by friendship. Mm. I think which is so important. Um, to have because if you have a, a tried and true good friend, you know, you may not speak to that person for a day or two, mm-hmm. but you're not like, you know, throwing them out to the woods. I'm never going to talk to that person again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of the thing there that I was, um, I learned as far as us just, us just being in business together and just focusing on how we can, uh, make a collective together. Yeah. Um, and I think we've, you know, one of the byproducts of, of us having a shop is that, not necessarily the sales, but seeing how we've affected people's lives, mm-hmm. like how her candles have affected people's mm-hmm. lives and the sage and everything like that. And sometimes we're like, we should just a- open up like a, a counseling shop on the side mm-hmm. or something <laughs> or whatnot, you know, because and honestly, it, it is a place of healing. So yeah. I, I like that that we have that that space there that that helps people out. You mentioned friendship. Now, um, a lot of people forget that part because I just had a great conversation with a friend of mine today where he was great friends with the woman that he, you know, was in love with, but then they got into relationship and the friendship part kind of got forgotten. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where he felt that that's probably where things broke apart, but continuing to still not just date, but still be friends, still enjoy each other's do all those things. Do you feel that that is really truly important for us? Because a lot of people just think like, yeah, you can be friends with anybody. No, No, you have to be friends with your partner. You treat your friends and, and let's be real. Like, Real friends, mm-hmm. not acquaintances. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. Yeah, like when someone's your friend, mm-hmm. you there's a mutual respect. Yeah. You don't want to let them down. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be their friend. They respect want boundaries. to be your right. So you're gonna do what it takes to make it work, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I said what it takes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but honestly, he's being PC about like yeah. the shop. That first year was hell, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like it was a rough first year of us having that shop um and we had to take a step back and really realize like what's more important you know Mm. um this business or our relationship and our relationship was more important and so we had to make adjustments and we're still making adjustments now it's not it's not easy yeah you know i applaud anybody who can work with their partner because I'm, he's still working full time mm-hmm. his day his nine to five job. Yeah. I left mine in October. Yeah. So we were working seven days a week. That's not even including just working the shop. That's yep. also creating our product. Yes. That's also marketing. All that. That's also everything else in the back end family. of it. Fa- and family yes. on top of that. Yes. You know. He mentioned that he doesn't biologically have mm-hmm. children, but he is a great father figure to my daughters. Mm-hmm. You know, he came in when they were in high school. Yeah. So um, it's just it's a lot yeah. and it's still a lot. Yeah. But, you know, we're pushing through it. So and you mentioned it's still continuing because a lot of people feel like, oh, once you kind of have that niche, like that's it. No, I think I guess, that's where you get stagnant. Yes. When you think it's a niche and then, you know, um, just continue growth, you yes. know, every day, you know. Um, yeah, just because if, if you continue to look for things that how can I help grow or learn something new or what challenges are there mm-hmm. that are going to teach me, you know, I think that helps from uh you you know you being stagnant okay 
So um, we're coming to the end of the show. I want you guys to take a moment to talk again, mention your business, how people can find you, website, Instagram, phone number, and location. Um, and then if you want to shout out any other businesses that you work with, um, it is Black Business Month. You know, um, it's just amazing that you guys, I love you guys so much. So thank you guys for coming. Thank but you. drop your information real quick. Okay. Blue Sage Eco Boutique. You can find us at 6202 North Central Avenue. That's in Seminole Heights, South of Central and Hannah. Um, website blue-sageboutique.com. Instagram at Blue Sage Boutique. Facebook dot com Blue Sage Eco Boutique. All right. So that's all the information you need. Go ahead, counsel. Yeah, you can find me at um, Higher Hustle Clothing on Instagram, Facebook, uh, higherhustle.com. Um, have two fashion shows uh, coming up in October. Okay. Um, just joined, I think, yesterday. Mm -hmm. One on the 13th of October, then one on the 15th of October. I'm um, not sure the one on the 13th. Uh, Sam is uh, throwing it, but uh, Stride, uh, Stride for a Cause is in their fifth year. They um, focus on breast cancer awareness uh, on that Sunday. They're having a, uh, a weekend of it, weekend event of that, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, perfect. So, again, this is Goddess Talk. Um, we've had Blue Sage Boutique, a.k.a. Christina, and Higher Hustle uh, Clothing, a.k.a. Mr. Council. Um, but thank you guys for coming. You've been a blessing to us. But are there any other businesses that yeah. you want to talk about on the, um, the crystal shop? So we talked about Paula Chakra yes. Zulu, her partner, Camille Smudge Life. Okay. She has a, a black market, melanated market, yeah. every other month called Indie Noir. Okay. The next one is September 14th. It's okay. a night market, so this one is for adults only. Okay. Nova Kane will be the host for that one. It's from 7 to 10. Okay. Um, who else? Do we uh, need to? Oh, next level um, with uh, Morris Martin. He's having yeah. a uh, uh, an event. We'll be out of town, but he uh, has an event on Friday or Saturday, I believe. Okay. Um, and shout out also to uh, Derek Grace as well. All right, perfect. So um, I'll do one more. One more. Okay, perfect. sorry. Farrell's <laughs> um, Cutting Lounge and Braiding. Okay. They're off of Fletcher, right next to um, the Taco Bus. Okay. They typically have an event, at least like rum and drums, uh -huh. like every other Friday night. Okay. It's Super fun, a lot of high vibes. Okay. Um, it's, yeah. Anyway, I gotta check it out. Yeah, check a, out Nanny and Barrow. All these things, and I'll I make sure, sure I will. put it in there. Absolutely. But you guys have tuned in again to Goddess Talk. This is Balaji. Thank you all so much. You have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.